What's up everybody? I'm Raf and I'm here with Billy and Mr. Trips as well. And today we're going to be talking about what is the best beginner snake? Is it a ball python like these guys or is it a corn snake? With herpticulture growing uh, at the rapid pace that it is, a lot of people who maybe even were scared of snakes are, are going, you know, I kind of want a snake and these are two very docile snakes that someone just getting over their fear is not going to have to worry so much about a bite or uh, anything going wrong really. Another reason that these two species, uh, which are always talked about as great beginner snakes, there's so many of them kept in captivity and they've been kept in captivity so long that if, if something seems a little off or whatever, or you're worried about something, the information's probably out there. So there are snakes with similar care requirements and similar dispositions, but these are the best too because all the info you need is out there. So let's get right into it. this off talking about corn snakes awesome little snake we're gonna be doing our scoring based on four different categories and we're gonna score each of those categories out of 10 points for each animal she's probably gonna poop on me but uh, our categories are going to be care things like heating lighting um, humidity and feeding and then we're gonna talk about the enjoyment of the interaction category number three is gonna be availability and cost and then finally, uh, morphs and variations, right? Because, uh, you know, you might be looking for a certain looking animal. So we're going to talk about that as well. Before we get into it, I have to say, this is more like a taste preference thing. Like, are you going to really say chocolate's better than vanilla? Y you might say it, but some people are going to tell you you're wrong, right? So uh, they're both absolutely amazing and there are no wrong answers here today. First up is the ease of care. It doesn't get any easier than this, right? Uh, corn snakes being a North American colubrid, um, they're used to a whole different range of temperatures. Now, obviously, you're not going to keep them at what they would experience in the wintertime where they're native to, places like the Carolinas and Georgia and things like that. But you really don't have to go too crazy with the heating and, and the lighting. It can choose to provide a basking spot around 90 degrees. Even a little lower would be completely fine. Uh, I've even heard stories about corn snakes kept at room temperature that do completely fine. Full disclosure, Stevie is kept at room temperature, but it's our reptile room temperature, right? So um, it does get a bit higher than like the normal, you know, 70 or so. Uh, it gets around, it usually floats around 75 in here and um, seems to do just fine for her. She's quite active. She eats, she poops, she digests. Uh, just fine, right, Stevie? And the humidity is nothing crazy either. Honestly, a lot of the time homes can be in their proper humidity range. Some people say as low as 30. Um, I usually go on the high side when it comes to humidity because, I mean, as long as like our Euromastics, he doesn't get really any kind of humidity, but that's because he's from the Sahara Desert. But uh, I think most species you go a little bit high and uh, be fine because it's, you know, it's a water. So, uh, yeah, right, Stevie? So, you know, around 40% to 60% range uh, is going to be fine. 60 on, on high days, you can spike it to 60 with a mist, maybe a couple times a week, and then it'll uh, it'll start drying out on its own. Also, as far as feeding goes, um, one rodent a week. You know, she's still growing, obviously. She's been growing like a weed, but obviously still growing. And... Uh, one road in a week is really not that bad. She had her biggest meal just recently and it's just a tiny mouse and she's closing in on a year old. So she's still eating a uh, small adult mice at this point in her life a year in. So if you're not really into feeding big old rats, like you might have to feed your ball pythons, uh, maybe the corn snake's a better option for you. As far as care goes for corn snakes, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a nine out of 10 because they're gonna poop more often than a ball python, so you probably should be spot cleaning a bit more often than a ball python. Let's get into care requirements for ball pythons. 
Now this is where ball pythons are gonna lose a couple points compared to corn snakes. And that's for just the simple reason that their basking spot temperature is gonna be a little higher, a low to mid 90s. And then also their ambient temperature is a bit higher. These being an African species compared to a North American species. He is squeezing me. With that being said, it's definitely not unmanageable to meet the temperature and humidity requirements for this species. Jesus, Billy. And this temperature and humidity will be even easier to maintain uh, if you avoid using a glass tank with a screen top, which is kind of the most common thing that reptiles are kept in. But uh, it can let that humidity escape and also uh, the temperature too, right? Because heat rises. So if I has a screen lid, all that heat's going to get out. Now it can be, I'm not saying it can't be done, it can be done, and there are shy species, so you want to at least cover up three sides of that glass. If you want to look through the front, obviously that's going to be fine, but you're probably better off using something like a PVC enclosure, or even a wood one, as long as that wood is prepped with a sealant where it's not just going to rot out from that humidity, because they do need a bit higher humidity. Also, use a good substrate. A lot of people use paper towel, you can, you're going to be misting more often than if you use like a nice damp cocoa husk or, or something like that. That's what we use for all, our ball pythons. And it's pretty easy to maintain that humidity with that stuff. Feeding can also be a hassle with these guys, especially the males right here. A lot of the time, the male, oh, sorry, Chips. It's okay. A lot of times the males will go on hunger strikes and avoid eating for even up to months at a time. The record's 24 months. We have a video on what to do if your ball python's not eating. I'll put it right here. But, uh, it definitely doesn't make them a bad animal. It just, it's frustrating. It's not, they're not gonna starve themselves out as long as you're keeping everything, the husbandry correct, keeping their temperatures and, and keeping them clean and everything like that. So they're not gonna starve themselves to death. They probably won't even lose any weight in that time. These guys have really slow metabolisms, especially compared to us humans. So even though it seems like, oh, he's missed however many meals, they'll be okay. Uh, just make sure that husbandry's right and uh, get them back on food as time comes. You can also offer food more sporadically, like instead of maybe every week for a, a growing little ball python, you can offer maybe once every two weeks or even three weeks, and that might jumpstart that hunger. You're gonna be feeding them a, a significantly larger rodent to your ball python, right? Billy's eating pretty, pretty serious size rats and she's not full grown yet. So uh, if that's something that that you don't want. You don't want a bunch of big old dead rats in your freezer. Feed frozen thought if you can. We're gonna give the ball python seven points in the care requirement because it's really not so bad. Again, as long as you're not panicking about the food and you're able to mist the enclosure down once, depending on the substrate and whatnot, once every day or every other day, um, you know, they're definitely not difficult to keep. On to the joy of the interaction. As babies, these guys can be real flighty, real bitey, whereas even ball python babies, they might be super uncomfortable, they might take a, a little strike at you, but um, these guys are kind of, as babies, they're going to try to bite you when you're trying to grab them. But I mean, it's like, I don't know if you've ever been whipped with wet spaghetti, but not hard at all. That's kind of what it would feel like. They're, they're pretty, pretty chill. Uh, especially as they get older, they're gonna calm way down. Stevie has not tried to bite me since literally the first day that we had her and we were just moving her to a different enclosure. So uh, it's not really something to worry about. And she was a tiny little noodle. So it's that's not a big thing about the issue with handling them. Now the other thing, a lot like a ball python, like I was just saying, they're super docile, right? So, I mean, you can see and she's not necessarily the biggest fan of handling, but she calms right down. Uh, they are going to be more inquisitive than ball pythons, right? So she's looking around a lot more and a lot quicker sniffing around. Um, again, she's still young. They do slow down as adults, but uh, they do have the ability to move a lot faster than ball pythons. So this just makes them a little less likely to be able to chill with you for an extended period of time without you paying too much attention. Obviously, if you have a docile corn snake, and hang out with them for a while, but you, you better be keeping an eye on them. They also get to that great size like ball pythons do, uh, around five feet, right? Four to five feet, but uh, they don't get that same girth. You know what I mean? If you want a big old sausage, you want a ball python. If, you, if you're cool with a long noodle, then uh, yeah, corn snakes are cool. Now this needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, faster metabolism on colubrids than constrictors, right? So 
you are going to be dealing with the potential for poop. Like I said, I think Stevie's loading one up. She might hit me with it any second now. And um, look, it's not the end of the world. It's not a huge snake. It's not going to be a huge poop. But if you really don't want to get pooped on, your odds are better with a ball python. It has to be said. Whereas, like, you know, Stevie will poop about two times per meal or so. And uh, ball python, well, it's going to depend, right? Trips will usually poop once a meal, but Billy will poop, like, once a month. For this reason, we're going to give corn snakes the old 8 out of 10, I think, right? Because you can kind of just plop a ball python on somebody, but uh, you want to let somebody handle a corn snake, if that makes any sense. As far as the joy of interacting with them, uh, I don't know. I'll probably say... Probably say 8 out of 10 because more poop potential, uh, but also a little bit quicker, a little, you know, you got to keep more of an eye on it. You should keep an eye on an animal anyway if you're handling it, but, uh, you know, they will be moving around, sniffing, trying to see what they could find. So we'll give them an 8 out of 10. To the joy of interacting. This is the gold standard, in my opinion. Um, much more slow moving than corn snakes. Adult corn snakes that are, are tamed out, they'll sit in a spot for a while too. But uh, even Trips, who's very nervous and does not love human interaction, that's about as fast as he goes. You know, he's uh, Billy is pretty much used to us now. Even the first week that we had Billy, she just hung out in a hoodie, in my hoodie pocket while we watched a movie together. And um, to me, that's something that I feel like a lot of people who want to keep reptiles want to do, right? I'm okay with... Handling's my favorite part about keeping reptiles, just hanging out with these guys. But I'm okay if I have a species that I can't just hang out with, can't just slap on my shoulder like Bartaby. But uh, a lot of people do want that. And uh, if you want a snake that's impressive to look at, right? Because they get to a nice beefy size. Again, Billy's not, ooh, sorry, Billy. Billy's not full grown yet, but she's a, a pretty good sized snake. People who, who aren't around snakes all the time might say like, well, that's a huge snake. Growing up to about uh, four or five feet, usually on average, sometimes males stay a bit smaller than that four feet. And uh, occasionally females will grow over that five foot, but they're more like outliers. But uh, it's a nice, and they get chonky, right? Corn snakes will not have that chonk to them. But, uh, you know, since they're eating big old rats, they're going to really get that, that width and that thickness to them, which is just really cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Something that's definitely worth mentioning is, although a lot of the time they can tolerate handling really well, you don't want to overdo it, right? You don't want to stress them out to the point where they never want to see you again. They never want to deal with this again. They think you could uh, even be a predator or something like that. So you just want to take it real easy. Trips, especially being as nervous as he was when he came in, um, after letting him settle in a little bit, just short, short little handling sessions, right? So you can come out and kind of say, oh, well, they haven't killed me yet, the big monkey people. So uh, I'm all right. I will say, the joy of interacting, Bartaby, when it comes to the joy of interacting with these animals, I'm going to give ball pythons 10 out of 10. Now, as far as the availability and cost of these guys, you find them anywhere reptile, anywhere that has reptiles, you're going to find a corn snake if that's what you're looking for, right? And um, as far as the cost goes, and this goes for ball pythons too. There are some fancy old designer morphs that we'll talk about in a second, but uh, they can get, you know, pricey, over $1,000 and things like that. But uh, as far as normals, you can find normals for, you know, $30, $40. So uh, we're, again, we're gonna base the score for the cost off the, the low end, right? Because if you're not too, not too picky about what they look like, you can find one easily for, for a good price. So for availability and cost, we're also gonna give the corn snake a 10 out of 10. So next thing we gotta talk about is uh, the availability and the cost, right? So can you find one if you want one? Well, with both these snakes, the answer is an astounding yes. They are everywhere. Again, they've been kept and bred in captivity for so long that uh, a lot of people have them. Ball pythons are probably, I mean, obviously I don't have the stats, right? But I feel like they're probably the most bred reptile and um, for that reason, you can find them anywhere. And also, with all the uh, variations and morphs of them, which we'll get into in a second, uh, normals have plummeted in price. Depending on where you're getting from, you could get a normal ball python for around 
you know, to even as low as like 20 bucks. A lot of breeders want to offload them and sell their fancier stuff. So these guys can range anywhere, like I said, from 20 bucks to uh, some higher end, so to speak. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of morphs and stuff because it's, and I know I have a blue-eyed leucistic. I know it. Listen. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of just wanting to do that. Now, these animals already existed, so are they cool? Will I want to breed them? Yes. But uh, people are really shooting for like seven, eight gene animals, making world's first animals and stuff like that, and power to them. But for that reason, these guys can range in cost from like 20 bucks to like over 10 grand and stuff, depending on, depending on the, the animal. And depending on if the breeder's just making a such a outrageous price that they just don't want anyone to make an offer on it, but they would sell it for such a crazy amount. As I said, uh, with the corn snakes, we're basing the cost off of like the lowest price point. You know, if you're really not worried about morphs, you just want what they look like in nature, uh, really cheap, really easy to find, 10 out of 10. When it comes to the variation and the morphs of corn snakes, uh, you're gonna find more normal variations, if that makes sense, whereas, like, ball pythons, normal ball pythons kind of look like normal ball pythons, but you'll find, depending on where you're at, what locality they are, uh, a couple, a couple different looking corn snakes that you can just find in the wild. Other than that, as far as true morphs go, or, or genes that are, or that are bred specifically to show those genes, uh, there's a lot, too, you know what I mean? Um, again, you can find pretty much any kind of looking corn snake. So you got the, the ones with more red like this. You got albino ones that look like candy canes. You got uh, lavenders that are, that are pinkish purple, even white with different colored polka dots because there are palmetto corn snakes, which are just amazing. They look awesome. For this reason, much like ball pythons, uh, we are gonna give them a 10 out of 10 because there aren't too many other animals that you can find this many morphs of, uh, where if it's in your budget, you can find pretty much whatever kind of looking snake you want. And as far as the variations and the morphs of these guys, there are so many. And not only so many different morphs, like individual morphs, because there are plenty of those, but the combinations are just insane. So, you can literally find pretty much however you want a snake to look, there's pretty much a ball python for that. Uh, without reds, it seems like, you know, you can find a lot of oranges, a lot of different things like that, but it seems like there aren't really reds. But other than that, I mean, you got purples, you got, I mean, Billy kind of has some pink to her, I guess, if you want to consider that. But, um, and the normals are just awesome looking too. Normal blood pythons are so cool looking. It's just that they get overlooked now after, uh, you know, all this and all this. So, uh, for that reason, with the just the amount of variation and how cool the normals look, I gotta I gotta give them a ten. Tens. On to the results. Stevie, do you wanna do you wanna read the results here? Okay, over the four categories, ball pythons racked up thirty seven points out of a possible forty, which is awesome. Obviously, they're great beginner snakes. Now, what about what about you, Court? You're upside down. Why are you upside down? Steve, why don't you tell me what the what the corn snakes got? Oh, big shocker! Also, thirty seven points. So I didn't I didn't plan that per se, but uh, I was kind of anticipating being a point or two apart, uh, max, and that's because again, they're both awesome. They're both completely amazing, and they're both uh, they're both great snakes, but. It's taste preference, right? Do you like the way that this looks uh, body-wise? Because again, you can find them however you want them to look. But do you like the way that this body style is? Or do you like the, the slower moving, girthier ball python, right? It's up to you. Uh, as far as the care goes, like I said, the care for the ball python is going to be slightly more difficult. But it's it's nothing that, you know, you need to worry about. As long as you're doing the proper research and you're and you're putting work in, right? Um, again, that's why these two snakes, I do believe, are the best beginner snakes. There's ones that are similar to care for and everything like that, but you can find so much information out there about these two, where uh, if, if you did end up getting one and, and you're starting to panic, like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with it, it's probably just a, a quick little internet search away, right? So uh, that's what makes these guys so great for beginners. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Uh, what do you think the best beginner snake is? Maybe you have both. 
a lot of people keep reptiles, uh, seem to keep a few. So, uh, yeah, I want to know what you guys think. Uh, am I wrong? Am I right? Where am I wrong? Where am I right? Uh, just tell me, let me know. And while you're down there commenting, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel for more reptile content twice a week. Uh, this has been me and Stevie and then billion trips earlier. So, uh, what do you say, Stevie? You gonna, uh, say bye? So thank you guys so much for watching again. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you next time.